So in this example, we're going to look at how the ideal gas law applies to a weather balloon. And a weather balloon is a balloon that is sent up into the upper atmosphere uh, to take weather measurements of, uh, of the atmosphere at high altitudes. And so um, this example actually is when a weather balloon goes up about six miles into the atmosphere. And uh, we're going to see how that affects the gas inside. So if a weather balloon with two moles of helium has a pressure of 0 0.2270 atmospheres at a temperature of 223 Kelvin, what is the volume of the balloon? So anytime we're solving these gas law problems, we've talked about using the guess, guess method, where G stands for given, write down what's given to you. So we extract from this problem the information that's given. We're given two moles. So I'm going to write that down. N is equal to 2.00 moles. The second thing we're given as we go through here is the pressure. And the pressure is 0 0.2270 atmospheres. So again, I'm going to write that down. Pressure is 0 0.2270 atmospheres. And then the third piece of information that I'm given is the temperature, T. And the temperature is equal to 223 Kelvin. So that's all that's given to us in the problem. And now we need to find the unknown. What is unknown in this problem? What are we solving for? And uh, it asks us for the volume. So we're going to be solving for V, which I'm going to write question mark. You could write an X if you wanted to. Um, but I, I'm going to write a question mark. And so now we're going to use this information to solve for our unknown. And uh, we need to select the appropriate equation, which is the ideal gas law, because only the ideal gas law has these four variables involved. And notice that I didn't put N1 or P1 or T1 or V1 or N2, P2, T2 or V2 because nothing in this problem is changing. We don't have changing moles, changing pressure, changing temperature. So I just write N, P, T, and V. So again, the ideal gas law is the only gas law that involves all four of these variables. So I'm going to write that down. The ideal gas law, P, V equals N, R, T. So that's our equation, the E in gas. So our next thing to do is to substitute. That's the first S in uh, guess. So we substitute in for all of these variables. So the pressure is 0 0.2270 atmospheres. The volume is uh, what we're solving for, so I'm just going to leave it as a variable. The moles are 2.0 moles. The R is always the same. It's 0 0.0821. So that's what I'm going to write. 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And notice that I'm putting all the units on all these numbers. No naked numbers. And then our last variable is temperature, 223 Kelvin. So now we have all of our numbers and variables substituted in. Um, we want to simplify. We're going to solve this equation. So first thing we want to do is simplify. And I'm going to start by simplifying my units. Over here on the left hand side I have atmospheres. And so that cancels out with the atmospheres over here in R. Um, I have moles in the numerator on the right-hand side, and that will cancel with moles in the numerator, I mean denominator, on the right-hand side. I have Kelvin in the denominator and Kelvin in the numerator on the right-hand side, so they cancel. And so you'll notice the only unit I have left is liters, which is the unit of volume that I'm solving for. So that worked out well. Your units have to uh, cancel out and leave the unit that you're solving for. So now we want to solve... Uh, or simplify our numbers. So we're going to multiply our three numbers on the right hand side to simplify them down. So when we do that, 2 times 0 0.082 times 223, I simplify that to uh, 36.6166 liters. Okay. On the left hand side, I haven't simplified any numbers, so I just write down what uh, we had originally. So our last step is to so isolate the variable, isolate the volume. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.2270. And on the right hand side, divide by 0 0.2270. These cancel. And when you do that, you'll get your volume measurement, which is 161.30660079 liters. Now, of course, your answer cannot possibly be this accurate given our measurement. So we need to round for significant digits. So we go back to our original numbers, three significant digits, four significant digits, three significant digits. And we pick the least, which is three. 
So we're going to round our answer to three significant digits, which means we're going to round our answer to 161 liters, three significant digits. And that's our final answer. The balloon will expand to 161 liters, which means we need to make sure our balloon is at least 160 liters uh, in volume large. So that's a great practical application. Um, if you would like to see more problems solved, please look at the links for the Khan Academy uh, Ideal Gas Law examples.